So before we jump into the sermon this morning, I just wanted to address a couple of things because we're in a really, really heavy cultural moment. And I don't know if you're savvy to this, but we had a tragedy in our nation yesterday. And uh, as I was getting ready for this sermon last night, I was sitting on the back porch with my wife after I'd given the kids a bath and we had gotten them down. And I started to open up the news and finding out that there was this incredible, horrific shooting that occurred in El Paso, Texas yesterday. And just to be honest, man, I broke. I was in tears yesterday evening praying for the families that were buying back the school supplies to get ready to go back to school and a gunman opened fire in a Walmart in El Paso. And as we found out this morning, 20 folks have died and lost their lives and dozens more are injured. And that's what I went to bed with last night and many of you did the same. Then I woke up this morning to find out that late last night or early this morning, however you wanna look at it, the same thing happened in Dayton, Ohio. And we had some more people that lost their lives in a bar and more people were shot and more people were in the hospital. And so in the last 24 hours in our nation, we have seen senseless life lost. And so I felt like before we jumped into the sermon this morning that it, we've gotta speak to that and church, we've gotta recognize that we're gonna turn on the radios and the televisions and the conversations tomorrow at your office are gonna be about fear. They're probably gonna be about politics. They're gonna be about what's going on in the world. And I thought that we would do something right here that would make a difference before we move forward. So I wanna invite, I know you just sat down, but I wanna invite everybody on every campus to their feet. And we're gonna pray for the families. We're gonna pray for our nation. But one of the values at our church, and many of you know this, is that we are a church and a people that are about pursuing uncommon unity. And that's not just words on a wall or on a website. That means that we've got people that don't look like each other, that love each other because of what Jesus has done for us. And so I wanna invite you on every single campus, if you don't mind, to grab the hand of the person next to you, reach across an aisle, and, what, and uh, maybe you gotta introduce yourself to do this. I hope you're holding hands with somebody that doesn't look just like you, all right? that comes from a different place than you do, and that God's people in a moment are gonna stand in solidarity. And I want us to pray for a couple of things. First off, I want us to pray for the people of El Paso and Dayton. And there's some things that don't move until we pray, but I want us to pray against a spirit of fear. There's a lot of people in, that are scared today, but God has told us that we are not the kind of people that shrink back, Christian, but that we carry the one true hope in Jesus Christ, the good news of the gospel, and that we actually carry the armor of light. And that darkness can try to do darkness things, but it can't stand where people of light are. And wherever you go tomorrow, you're gonna carry the good news of Jesus and the hope of Christ. And that, man, even the craziness of the horrific tragedies of this weekend, Jesus Christ, at the end of time, we know that what the enemy intends for evil, that God can use for good. And it didn't come from God, but it did come through his sovereign hands. And that he is giving us an opportunity as a people to speak into this cultural moment. So don't shrink back. Have conversations with your kids, with your coworkers, and let's stand as a people in prayer, and let's pray for the folks in El Paso and Dayton right now. Would you join me? Father God, thank you. Thank you that you have a hope that in the darkest of days doesn't shrink. So God, don't let us be a people that shrink. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of power and love and of self-control. So God, that we would go forward carrying your good fruits into the places you call us, that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control would mark us. And so God, wherever we go tomorrow, and as we go back to school in a few short days, and as many of us go to Walmart later today to buy school supplies, that we would not be a people of fear, but a people of faith. And that we would stand in the face of darkness, shining the light of the gospel where you give us an opportunity. Thank you right now for this chance. And for our brothers and our sisters, God, in El Paso and in Dayton, Lord, we pray for them. We ask that you minister to them. We thank you for the stories that are already coming out of gospel and how people are sacrificing themselves and that people were giving blood and donating, that lines were wrapped around bu buildings to donate blood and that selflessness is gonna be the storyline. And God, in a, in a country that wants to be broken and, and shattered with isms and racism and tribalism and politics and policy, that we would be a people that stand in the gap and pursue uncommon unity because it's who you have made us to be, Jesus Christ. So we pause right now and we thank you for the chance and the hope that we have in you. And we ask that you do it all for your great glory, our joy, and the world's good. In Christ's name we pray and we say together, amen. 